Welcome to Ease on Fair Baptist Church. Stay tuned for today's previously recorded message. May this recording be a blessing to your life. Welcome to Ease on Fair, the most exciting church in Wilmington, Delaware. So, I want to talk about that God loves you any type of way if you even do a big mistake. He still loves you. And God is the just the best. He, he does any types of miracles, and it's a wonderful, wonderful experience to have miracles in your life and have God lo feel the love of God in your heart. So this is what you should do. And if you know this, God died for us because he loved us. He didn't die because he just thought it was too ruckus and he wanted to go back to heaven. He died for our sins. We could have been on that cross sacrificed. But God was the one who sacrificed us for his life. Daddy is the real one who's going to be talking. Well, great God from Zion. Thank God that was just Ashley Curry, my little baby. I told her, I said, listen, we missed so many of the saints on Sunday that maybe you could open up the broadcast, you can open up this time of telecast uh, by sharing something in your heart. And she just went in her own way. Thank God for children. Thank God for who God is. Isaiah and Fair, we are blessed to have our first daughter who loves the Lord and want to express the love of the Lord to all who are around. Doesn't matter where you are, she said. Doesn't matter what you've done, what mistakes you've made. God still loves you. He died upon Calvary's cross for you. Saints, we're trying a few new things. We know that we're now in the midst of this coronavirus and so much is going on and we take it very, very seriously. Uh, God's hand is in it. God is moving. And I want to make sure that you stay sound and rooted. It's very important, very important that you not only love God, but you follow the hand of God, even when you don't understand what God is doing. God is doing something right now, and we must be attentive to it. Every Sunday, we have three services. We have a 5 a.m., we have a 8 a.m., and an 11 a.m. And during the 5 a.m. last Sunday, I shared with the saints. I said, listen, it is too much noise in your head. It's time for us to settle down our noise and allow God to minister to our hearts. When we don't know what to do as believers, we listen to hear the direction and the voice of God. So saints, I'm excited about who God is and what God is doing in this period. So much has been going on, so much stuff has been permitted, but God is now in control. No one can help us. We can't look to the White House. We can't look to the government. We can't look to the governor's mansion. We have to look to the hills from which come our help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. So saints, we wanted to give you an opportunity to see our service of last Sunday when many churches were closed. We decided that whoever wanted to come, just come, and we're going to praise the Lord together. And we had a glorious time. Many of you know that the church is one of the hardest hit when we have these type of closures because all of our ability to be able to operate is done by your donations, by your tithing, and by your offerings. And I pray that even though you weren't able to make it to church this Sunday, that you would remember that we need to still uh, pay our tithing and give it our offering because the lights have to stay on, the mortgage still have to be paid, and we still have to make sure that the operations of the church and all that we do in this community is still moving forward. So if you would please remember that you can give, even though you weren't here physically, you can give by going to our cash app, dollar sign, EFBC, and donating your, uh, giving your tithing and donating any of your offerings. We would love to have you. This church has been a pillar in this community, and we want to make Make sure that you are still doing your part to keep advancing the earthly kingdom of God. If you don't have Cash App and you want to call the church and you want to use your debit card or your credit card, you can certainly call the church 302-652-9114. Again, 
That's 302-652-9114. That's our church line, and they will certainly be available to receive your donations and contributions. And if you just want to do it the old-fashioned way and send us a check in the mail, it's 1400 B Street, Wilmington, Delaware, 19801. Either way you choose to do it, we have never been a church that's put a lot of emphasis on money because I was taught as a young man that if you build strong ministry, the money will follow. You don't have to have tricks. We will never have tricks. We decided we're going to have church. And if you weren't able to make it, but you know that you are a tither, you know that you are a giver, then we ask that you would do that. I want you to take this time now to look at our service of this last Sunday. The subject this week is now, the power of now. And I'm in a series, so you're going to be hearing a whole lot of different words that we're going to use to impact your life. But I want you to enjoy our choirs and then the word of God. And I'll come back at the end to close us out. God bless each and every one of you.
Father, here we are again standing behind the sacred desk. Father, we recognize we have no power because all power is in your hand. And Father, as we declare the word of God to the people of God, we pray that you would heal, that you would deliver, and that you would set somebody free. Thank you, Father, for all that have been done thus far. And now, God, take total control that needs will be met in the name of Jesus. And God will give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. amen and amen. Amen. Today we start a new series titled Powerful and Life-Changing Words. We believe with all of our heart that the power of life and death is in your tongue. And a lot of times we don't get to we don't get to, 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 to move past certain places because we don't use right language. So today we're going to focus on now. So many times we've been, God been pushing us to do something and we've been telling God not yet. God is saying your not yet need to be right now. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord together. Go with me to the book of James, chapter 4, verse 13, and I'll be as brief as I can. Chap James, chapter 4, verse 13. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Even if I couldn't preach a little bit, the text is clear. You plan too much for tomorrow. God is saying you're living in right now. Amen. So today I want to talk about the power of now. Don't touch, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have to live in the power of now. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus together. On this day, in this hour, within this moment and right now, there's a great opportunity for us to be vehicles of God's love. God's truth, God's peace, God's justice, God's power, and God's mercy. Because the life of faith is not a life that spends a whole lot of time wondering about, speculating about, and stressing over what can happen tomorrow, next week, next month, or next year. If you are a person of faith, you live in God's right now moment. Do I have a witness here? If you are a person of faith, you are certainly going to still invest in the stock market. You're definitely going to try to prepare for your children to go to college. You are definitely going to prepare some things to continue to live. But you don't center your whole life around what's going to happen tomorrow. There were people who laid down, hear me somebody, who laid down last night did not wake up this morning. They laid down last night with their mindset that when I get up tomorrow, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do the other. But they didn't know that God has a plan that supersedes our plan at all times. Do I have a witness in here? We must learn how to submit our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, if the Lord says so, so we'll live tomorrow, but for today, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Do I have a witness in here? In fact, my brothers and sisters, one of the most lethal words that we can have in our vocabulary is the word tomorrow. Somebody say tomorrow. Because any person who becomes enamored with the hidden realities of tomorrow runs the risk of missing out on what God wants to do in their lives today. 
Mm, you'll catch it later. You would be amazed, Brother Chris, with all how many people there is who live silently captive by tomorrow. They never live in this moment, but they always wishing for tomorrow. It robs them of their dynamic, transformative, supernatural things that God would desire and have for their lives. They sit back and say, it's going to happen tomorrow. You remember, Annie, the sun will come out tomorrow. I think I'm going to join the choir. You remember? And that was her whole thing. Even though it's dark today, we'll get through today. Just wait till tomorrow. But brothers and sisters, here it is. God has you in. I didn't even know I could do that. God has you in a moment by divine design. You are where you are right now. And you have to see this moment and move forward with what God has called you to do. God does not put his plans on delay because you feel you're not ready yet. It's not about you being ready. It's about God commissioning you to move forward in the kingdom of God. Do I have a witness in here? Listen, listen. But, but then we have those who don't even think about tomorrow. They're just people who procrastinate. Do anybody know anybody who always procrastinating yeah they just procrastinate oh I'll get to it sooner or later oh don't worry about it it's gonna happen I'm gonna take care of it but saints of God we cannot be procrastinators we cannot be people who hold back and say I'm gonna get to it because here's the truth every time you say I'm gonna get to it later things continue to build in your life instead of you just going on and fixing it instead of you just going on and making it right you keep saying it'll get down later on I'll take care of it later on but the devil is a liar if God has called you to do something you must do it if your family needs something you can't wait to tomorrow you can't be in a procrastinate mode and say I'm gonna get to it you gotta move life is only for a moment. Look at your neighbor. Don't touch him and say, neighbor, life is only for a moment. You see, see and once you get that in your spirit, that I don't know if I'm going to be here. Now, according to the doctor, I'm in great shape. According to the doctor, if I was shed 15 pounds, I would be in great shape. But do you know, I know some folks who were in great shape and who died, just dropped dead. But listen, you got to live life today as if it is your last day I don't know about you but I made up my mind I'm going to love my child to the fullest, I'm going to love my wife to the fullest, I'm going to love this church to the fullest because when my time has come to an end there will be no regrets over what I didn't do and what I didn't say and what I, oh I wish I had somebody in here know what I'm talking about we cannot live our lives waiting for another season, Can I get a witness because the problem is we always like to delay everything we like to live in a I'm, it's gonna happen later on mode and that's why 30 pounds ago sister Sharif you were supposed to go on a diet not you sister Farid but somebody else you were you know I call out names you were supposed to go on a diet and you have still not gone on your diet you know that you said last year that you were gonna get out of debt by stop using those credit cards but every time I turn around you go to the restaurant ordering all that stuff and spending on your credit card you said you were gonna stop smoking you said you were gonna stop drinking you said you were gonna stop complaining you said you were gonna stop cussing everybody out that was last year and still you cussing everybody out because we believe that we gonna get to it somehow some way but the truth of the matter is we need to do it right now look at somebody and say right now we need to do it right now but here's the problem our problem is we always plan for later but God says your later is right now hear me somebody God says your later is right now hear me somebody God said your later is right now which means whatever is in your heart you ought to say it whatever your heart tells you to do you ought to do it whatever your heart tells you to attempt you ought 
to try it and you ought to stop living your life yesterday or tomorrow but you need to live your life right now listen to the words of the text the text says now listen you who say that today or tomorrow we will go to this city or to that city spend years trying to build our business and making money what do you know do you really know how much time you got on this earth do you really know what's going on God is saying stop planning so much for tomorrow and live in this moment pastor why are you preaching this type of sermon to us because I'm tired of hearing people 20 years later talking about dreams they never got filled God is saying you could have filled those dreams 20 years ago but you keep talking about what I'm gonna do later God said in the middle of a sermon I want to make sure you understand James chapter 4 where he tells us to go ahead and know that your life vanishes away one day so you ought to live your life as if it's the last time which means I'm gonna get up which means I'm gonna get up which means I'm gonna get up I'm gonna stop making excuses which means I'm gonna let the devil know that if God has called me then it doesn't matter how other people do it I'm gonna do what God this is a grand moment the moment that you're living in the moment that you're living in I don't care what's going on I'm almost finished I'm, I'm, I'm serious I'm serious I don't care what you're going through I don't care where you are the moment that you're living in right now is a preordained moment and God is saying I put you in this spot for a reason and I did not put you in this spot so you can think about it I did not put you in this spot so you can wait for somebody to come and save you but I put you in this spot so that you can move and have your being in me do I have a witness in here so here's the question this morning here's the question here's the question how do we embrace this life-changing notion called now look at your neighbor don't touch him don't touch him but look at him and say, neighbor, how do we embrace this life-changing notion called now? First, next week, come back, I'm going to finish up. First, we've got to face the enemies of now. The enemies of now are real. There are things and forces that want to keep you from getting to where God would have you go. And you're going to have to start struggling and fighting those enemies. Despite the reality of God wanting to use you, bless you, promote you, and advance you, God also wants for your life, love, grace, peace, and prosperity. God wants you better than where you are. Don't you ever believe that because you're a Christian, you're supposed to be suffering. There is some Sundays and then there are some night experiences. But God will let you have a little bit of both. But if you're only living in the night experiences, something is wrong with your faith. Because the God that I serve, he knows how to lift you up above the problems that you're going through. Do I have any help in here today? Listen, 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 listen. Number one, let's, let's deal with these enemies. And I'm going to get out of your way, Brother J. Kai. Well, I'm, I'm, I, the enemy number one is indecision. Look up and say indecision. Yeah. James 1, 8 says these words. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna meddle, I'm gonna chill because it ain't because y'all came to church today. But you know some people who are just two-faced it. I know I said it wrong, but I still said it. I'm here to represent it and I ain't taking it back. One moment they this way, next moment the next way. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 verse 8, it says a double-minded man, a double-minded person, a double-minded woman is unstable in all of their ways. You can't trust people who got two faces. Come on, high five God and say woo woo. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. To live in the now, Brother Chairman, we've got to make a decision to be available to God's will for our lives. And that means sometimes we're not going to be able to do other stuff in order to do what God has assigned our lives to. Do I have a witness? We've got to be willing to surrender to God's plan for our lives. We cannot be afraid of doing what God has told us to do based on our past. Because we made mistakes. 
Because we, we came up short, we decide I'm not going to do because I'm scared God is not really using me. But here's the truth. If you're here today, grace knows your name. If you are here today, mercy suited your case. Which means God says, I'm going to give you another chance to fix what you messed up. Do I have anybody in here who can testify that you made mistakes, but God gave you another chance, another chance, another decision that I'm going to trust God. You got to make a decision that I'm going to stand on God's word. You got to make a decision that if God brought me to it, I know he's going to bring me through. You got to make a decision if nobody else will support me as long as I got King Jesus. When you don't make a decision, you open yourself up to not getting what God has for your life. You have to make a decision that I'm going to trust God. That was what the quiet the praise team was singing. I'm going to trust God. Even though I don't understand what God is doing, I'm going to trust God. Even though it hurts me, I'm going to trust God. And that comes with making a decision. Come on, high five the Lord and say, I'm making a decision. Listen, not only is indecision an enemy. I got another one. Sit down. I don't want y'all to get too excited because this is a teaching message. Got another one. Not only is indecision an enemy, but also perfectionism. Mm -hmm. I see you looking at me, Ashley. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Perfectionism. It's an enemy. Let me show you. Let me show you. Look at the text. Look, not the text. But look at Ecclesiastes 11 and 4. Ecclesiastes 11 and 4 says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. Well, if I can't operate with everything perfect, then I ain't going to operate. Shame on you. Because you forgot you ain't perfect. I wish I had somebody that caught that today. And you forgot something else. You forgot that while none of us are perfect, we serve a perfect God. And because we serve a perfect God, he will give the increase to everything that we are lacking in. Do I have a witness in here? Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Indiscretion, or, or indis indecision rather, it, 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 it deals with us not allowing God to use us because of something worried about. We're saying to ourselves, I don't want to make a decision because somebody might not like it. Do you know I got delivered from people and that's when I start shouting? The moment you can get delivered, from, listen, I don't know who I'm talking to in this room today, but I want to help emancipate you. The moment that, I'm going to be finished because some of y'all are like, oh God, Lord, come on. The moment you get delivered from people, especially black people, God can bless your life. As long as you're holding on to their opinions, as long as you're holding on to their thinking, you're going to stay in bondage. But the moment you break out and say, I ain't listening no more. I ain't worrying about it. I'm moving forward. Watch God bless your life. Got to make a decision. Got to make a decision. But not only, okay, I'm going to push you a little bit further. Not only about the decision, not only about being perfect, it's another one, it's another one. Fear. Look at your neighbor and say, fear. He ain't talking about you. Tell him, he ain't talking about you. Because you ain't scared of nothing. But, 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 but fear is an enemy of, now let me show you something. Proverbs 29 says, oh, thank you Jesus for her learning. The fear of people is a trap. It's in the Bible. Well, Jay, what you looking at me like that for? Let me show you. It's in Proverbs chapter 29. 
It says the fear of people is a trap. The enemy uses that. Anybody who you see always want to please people, don't trust them. Oh no, they're such a nice spirit. Oh, don't say that, Pastor. You just don't know. They just love the Lord. Oh, Pastor, they just no, no, no. When you find anybody who who are people pleasers, they will turn on you faster than a snake will turn. Because whichever way the wind is blowing is the way they gonna go. Fear. Fear. Somebody say fear. Many of us fail to embrace the moment that's before us out of fear. We fear what people will say and do. We fear how people will feel. We fear how it will look in front of people. We fear what the given moment will require of us. I'm not going to say much because I don't want the pastor to call on me. We, we live in fear. So we play that what if game quite often. What if I try and I fail? Well, if you try and you fail, you're not a failure. I'm going to say that again. If you try and you fail, you are not a failure. You are just one who's being developed. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm being developed. Because not a person up here, not a person in this church can say they got everything right. Not a person that you know can say that everything they do is right. Because at the end of the day, you cannot be afraid to fail. What you got to be afraid of is to stay in your failure. Mm. Mm. I got another one. I had a little bit more energy at the 8 o'clock. So I'm going to keep chilling. You ain't going to sleep on me yet, did you? Okay, all right. Here's the next one. Laziness. Matter of fact, don't even look at your neighbor. Just look up and say laziness. Proverbs, look at this, Sister Sharif. This blessed my life, and I know you'll love this scripture. Proverbs 13, 4 says, lazy people want much but get little while the diligent are prospering. Pastor, why you get up 5 o'clock in the morning, come down to the office, stay till 8, 9 o'clock at night? Pastor, why you? Because I ain't lazy. I don't have to be paid for what I do because when time comes, for benefits, God is going to remember how diligently I worked. Oh, I don't like it because I'm talking about myself. For those of you who only do the requirement, what time am I supposed to be to work? What time am I supposed to get off? But yet you talk about you want to be rich. Come here, Oprah. If you want to be rich, you got to make sure you can run every aspect of the business. You got to make sure that you are up before everybody else. You are there when everybody else leaves. Because let me tell you how the enemy likes to trap you. While you being lazy, the enemy is taking your whole business. There was an episode on Cosby Show. That's why I like to preach fast because I don't get a chance to think like I'm thinking now. There was an episode on the Cosby Show where... Malcolm Jamal Warner, who is, I forgot his name, what is his name, Theo, says to his father, he said, Dad, I don't want to go to college. I just want to be rich. Dad said, well, how are you going to be rich and not go to college and not have nothing in your brain? He said, that's why we have people. I'll hire the best accountant. I'll hire the best manager. I'll hire all these people. And he said, you'll be the brokest man in the world. Because let me tell you something about people who know you don't know your business. <laughs> they know how to get your business to become their business. The text says, I, somebody just got help right there. The text says lazy people want much, but they do very little. And God is saying, if you want to live in this right now moment, you're going to have to get up and do something. You're going to have to show the Lord and the world that I am ready to be used by God. I am ready to 
do for God. Do I have a witness in here today? Let me go to my next one. Let me go. I'm, I'm careful. Here's a, here's a, we talked about indecision. We talked about perfectionism. We talked about uh, fear. We talked about laziness. Now, here's another one. I only got one more after this one. Here's another one. An aversion to commitment. I don't want to breathe too much. Y'all may get something, so I'm just chilling. Aversion to commitment. It's an enemy. We live in a culture. Uh-oh, Curry, you're going to get in trouble. We live in a culture where commitment is twisted. People only want to be committed to what they want to be committed to. People will say, I'm with you. Thank you. They have commitment twisted, and it's this new culture. I remember a time when we would say we're, we're, we're together through thick and thin, but now when it gets thick, folks thin out. The purpose for commitment is that in the sunshine, we build it, but in the rain, we stick with it. And what happens in this new culture is that I'm only with you when you're with me. This morning at the 8 o'clock, I told them, Sister Jones, that I've been married 20 plus years and I'm house trained. I told them. I told them, mothers, I'm house trained. You see that little girl? She ain't here today. She's not feeling good. I told her, be careful with you because if you got something, don't give it to me or them. But I'm the house trainer. She knows my schedule. She knows how I chill. She knows how you know, I operate. You know, If 8.30 hit and I ain't called, she going to be calling me. But I'm going to tell you what I do when I realize I'm, 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 it's 8.30. I'll, I'll immediately pick up the phone and say, hey, babe, <laughs> I'm on my way. Because I'm house broken. I'm committed to my marriage. I want to make sure that if I don't preserve nothing beyond my walk with God, I'm preserving my marriage. And every now and then, just to make sure she know I'm not being slick willy. I'll FaceTime her, and I don't even like FaceTime. And I'll say, babe, I'm on my way. I ran, I had to run to Wawa. Get me a chicken salad sandwich. Now you're saying, Pastor, why are you talking like this? Because you gotta know what commitment is. Being committed to my wife doesn't mean we don't argue. Uh-oh, I'm, I'm mixing the banana. Man, she gets on my nerves sometimes. I mean, I never get on hers now. Let's, let's, let's be straight. Let's be straight. Because I'm the pastor. She gets on my last nerve. But when she... Somebody, some people look laughing like, <laughs> Bruh, don't be like pastor because you will get whipped. Right, Chris? <laughs> if you start acting... Oh, Dina, not even out here, so you all right. Hallelujah. But, 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 but... She get home, sometimes we get into arguments and we argue, but guess what? We committed. We ain't talking about let's divorce. I don't like the way you fried the chicken. Let's divorce. I don't like the way you did this. I don't like the way you looked at that girl. Let's divorce. Saints, commitment is important. It's an enemy against right now. Whatever is happening in your life, you have to be committed. You have to be committed even when you don't like it. You got to be committed. Do I have a witness in here? Let me move this thing a little bit further about commitment. Let me, let me move it a little bit further about commitment because, 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 because I'm learning something. I'm learning that, 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 that we can never be our best self if we're not committed to God. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and he will add all these other things to you. We cannot be committed to God and do better for God if we're not committed to God. God wants to bless our lives, but we got to make the decision to be committed to our God. We got to make the decision to be committed 
to our health. We got to make the decision to be committed to our life and our lifestyles. Because listen, when you're in the hospital, people only visit you twice. Did you hear? She was in the hospital. They run to the hospital so they can say they would have been there. You stay in the hospital two weeks, they ain't coming to see you no more. That's why you got to build your commitment with the Lord. So that the Lord will be able to take care of you in those down moments. I got one more and I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Indecision. Perfectionism. Fear. Laziness. Aversion to commitment. And the last one, says Jay Codwell here, I'll try to hum a little bit. Mm. It's comfort. Comfort. Being comfortable is a dangerous spot. If you want to know how God promotes his people, it's based on your discomfort. Pastor, what are you saying? If you remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus looks up to his father and he says, Father, I can't take no more. Father, this thing is hurting me. Father, I got pain everywhere. Let this cup pass. I can imagine God saying, well, if that's what you want to do, then I'll stop right here. If he had stopped right there, he just would have been a carpenter from Nazareth. He just would have been a miracle worker. But I'm so glad that the text did not end with let this cup pass. The text went on to say, nevertheless. Come on, look at somebody and say, nevertheless. <laughs> because when you are in a bad situation, you got to add to your vocabulary. <laughs> when you feel like you're distressed and you feel like giving up, <laughs> you got to learn to say, nevertheless, <laughs> it's not about me, <laughs> but it's about the God that I serve. <laughs> you got to learn to say, nevertheless, <laughs> because if you're going to do <laughs> what God would have you to do, <laughs> you have to operate in discomfort. <laughs> It's no doubt about it that Jesus was dis was uncomfortable when he was going through what he went through. But he made up his mind that I am committed. And because I'm committed, I'll say let the cup pass. But not my will, but thine will be done. And I don't know about you, but if you really want to move forward in now, you're going to have to learn learn how to say say to the Lord I understand how bad I feel I see how they talking about me I see how they trying to set me up but nevertheless not my will thine be done if you want a greater anointing if you want a higher calling you gotta get uncomfortable and still operate if you want to see God at another level you gotta say to yourself now God I'm ready for you to use me they lied on me but I'm ready for you to use me they laughed at me but I'm ready for you to use me because true victory comes through your stress it comes through your strain do I have anybody who's in here today who can tell the truth when I stop being being comfortable God start blessing me when I stop being comfortable God start making ways when I stop being comfortable God open doors and I don't know about you but I'm so glad that I serve a God that when I am weak he makes me strong
strong when I feel like giving up. He holds my hand. Do I have a witness in here today? My God, he is able. Yeah, you got to be uncomfortable knowing that God got your back. You got to be uncomfortable knowing that God is going to work it out. I don't know when. I don't know how. But I know that God, I know that God, he is able. He is able to make a way out of no way. He is able to lift my head. He is able to plant my feet. Do I have a witness? The first part of the text, and I'm done. The first part of the text says to us that we must recognize that all these plans are no good unless the Lord sustains them. So what you gotta do is you gotta operate now. However you feel, make a decision. Don't wait for perfect conditions. Get rid of fear. Do not be lazy. Make sure that you are committed and don't live in a comfortable state. You don't grow when you're comfortable. I go to the gym at least twice a week, and if I'm still lifting 20 pounds, after 20 years, something is wrong with me. You have to put more tension in so that you can grow. And if you can't survive people talking about you, you're not growing. If you can't survive people lying on you, you will never, ever survive. But what God is saying to all of us, operate in now, forgetting what's behind you, reaching what's before you. And don't go into tomorrow, but go into today and let God bless your life and what he wants to do for your life. This message today is the start of many. God is saying it's time to instruct us. You're bigger than where you are. You are stronger than where you are. You don't have to fret over anybody. Trust God and believe that God has your back. My, 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 what a mighty word from the Lord. What a great service. For those of you who missed it, it was a time in the Lord. The Lord blessed us tremendously. The subject is simple, the power of now, the power of now. And I hope you enjoyed our choirs. I hope you enjoyed the worship experience. And while you are not able to come to the house of the Lord, we wanted to bring it to you. Remember, this is the Lord doing his work his way and I ask that you would yield to him. Again, I want to remind you, you can certainly donate and send your tithing through Cash App, dollar sign EFBC, or you can call the church and use your debit or credit card to pay your tithing and give your offering 302-651, I'm sorry, 302-652-9114, and the staff will be here to assist you. And by the same token, if you want to send it in through mail, it's 1400 B Street, Wilmington, Delaware. Again, we are not a church of tricks. We are a church that believe that if you do effective ministry, God will take care of his own. Saints, until the next time we come together, you stay safe. Make sure you're washing your hands. Make sure you're washing your hands. Make sure you're using the sanitizers. Make sure that you are wiping down areas that you come in contact with because we want you to stay safe. But at the end of the day, everything is in God's hands. I don't want you to take for granted by saying the Lord will take care of you. You do. Faith without works is dead. So you do your part. You do your due diligence. And God will bless your life real good. Until the next time we come together, may the Lord God bless you real good.